Oh, wait. I should turn this on. Just turn that one on. Yep. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's one more talk this session. This time around we have Raphael Merckx. Rafa discovered Python in high school and has never looked back. He used Python for academic research, machine learning, and most recently in web development. After working for startups in California, he moved to Timor Leste where he works on aid projects for Catalpa International. He is a Django contributor and a general open source enthusiast. And when the Timorese internet, internet goes down, you can find him free diving and practicing his broken tattoo. Everyone, please welcome to the stage, Raphael Merckx. All right, hello, thank you everyone. So yeah, that has been said, I'm Rafa, and in my day job I do work for Catalpa. So we're about uh, 15 people now, and we're uh, an NGO, we design and we build software for uh, development projects and ATSOF and project. Uh, we do work entirely using Python and Django for the back end, uh, and the front end has been a mix of like mobile applications and Riot.js for the most part. Uh, and we're indeed based in Timor-Leste. So Timor-Leste, it's about 700 kilometers uh, north of Darwin, Australia. Uh, it's the second youngest country in the world. And now that South Sudan exists, not the youngest anymore. And uh, it's about 1.2 million people. Uh, one of our projects is called uh, Liga Inan. So that's stay tuned for uh, connecting mothers. And this project seeks to improve the health of pregnant mothers and their babies once they're born. Uh, so historically in Timor, uh, maternal mortality and neonatal mortality has been pretty high. Uh, and there's many reasons to that, but one of them is general lack of access to healthcare because T Timor is a poor country. Um, and especially for women who live in rural areas, um, they won't necessarily have a motorbike, definitely don't have a car, even if they do, the roads are poor quality and there's not that many hospitals. So in general, it's, it's hard for them to get access to um, health advice or even a health professional while, when they're delivering. Um, and, but like in many developing countries in Timor, um, in the past five or 10 years, there's been uh, increasing access to mobile phones. And five years ago when Nigain and started, uh, definitely not smartphones, but at the very least feature phones. And people use it, like people will send SMSs to their family uh, that live in other parts of the country. Um, they call each other, they have like, definitely like a lot of the people I meet have at least one phone, one phone per family. So what we do with Liga Inan is uh, we send them SMSs. And there's two things we do. One is we send general SMSs that about like nutrition advice, general health advice like do not smoke during your pregnancy, uh, once the baby is born, we just send advice about vaccination. And we also put the mothers in contact with uh, midwives. So um, let's say a mother comes to a midwife, and that midwife is registered with a Liga Inan program. That midwife is going to send a command to Liga Inan uh, that will register this mother with the program. Thereafter, the mother will receive SMSs, and then the mother can also send an SMS to the program and request to call me with the midwife. So if anything is happening during her pregnancy, she can, seek, she can seek advice. She has like her local midwife that might not be close physically, but at least she's closer thanks to like SMSs. Um, the midwife is also going to try to ensure that um, the mother will have some health professional when she's delivering. So maybe best case scenario, she goes to a hospital, so they arrange transportation to the hospital. Um, but uh, it can also be that the midwife goes to the mother's home um, yeah, so Liga Inan, we just passed 20,000 mothers registered with Liga Inan last year. Uh, and overall, it's been, it's been fairly successful. Um, there is research that shows that women registered with Liga Inan are by twice as likely to deliver in the presence of a health professional than mothers who are not registered with Liga Inan. Okay, um, one problem that came up with Liga Inan was that um, midwives were using all these SMS commands to manage all these mothers. And typically one midwife might be responsible for like 100 pregnant women at a time. And that's quite a bit of women to manage when you just have like this SMS application on your phone. Um, so they were saying that there's this information problem and as smartphones are getting cheaper, uh, we made a mobile app for them to track all the mothers. So the mobile app is really mostly a list of mothers that says, okay, here's, here's all the mothers in your area that are set to deliver soon. Like, here's their name, their phone number. I'll, I'll show it to you in a minute. 
Um, and then they also get notifications. For example, oh, uh, Adelia is set to deliver in three weeks, or uh, this woman should have given birth a week ago. Has she? And if she has, um, did she go to a hospital? And we use this to track our stats, etc. Um, but um, the Timorese internet is um, not as good as the Australian internet. You can't just like rely on the network all the time. I know Australians complain about their internet, but I can assure you it's, <laughs> it's really good. I'm really enjoying it. Um, yeah, so definitely we need this application to be accessible offline. Sometimes there is network available, but uh, that network is slow, and so we don't necessarily want for the network to return before we start showing information to the midwife. Um, yeah, there's this basically in general we're just showing information, and if this information is like a little bit outdated, it's much better to show it than to not show it and wait for the network to come up. All right, and. We built this entire mobile application using web views. Um, we, yeah, we, we don't have Android developers in-house. We thought it was simpler to just use web views to display information. And the way we bridge this gap between web views and taking an app offline is using service workers. So that's the theme of this talk. Service workers, they're available in any web views. Like, uh, you don't have to use a mobile phone to use them. Uh, they're in general available on Chrome and Firefox, even for any website. I'm going to start uh, by showing you the Liga in an application without the use of service workers. Um, so on the left, you have the view of the mothers. Uh, and on the right, you have the Chrome developer tools for that view. All right, so, so this is all fake information, by the way. I'm not showing you like real health data. Uh, the mother's view, this is the notifications view. OK, very good. Um, and then I'm reloading this page using my very good Australian internet here. And it takes like a couple seconds, and everything loads fine. Uh, you might be a little mad at all these requests we're making, but we're using HTTP2, so that's not a concern in general. We're caching all of these static assets, so really there's mostly the, the request at the top that's like about 10 kilobytes, that the, that's the root like HTML request. And then there is a couple JSON requests at the bottom for loading data about the mothers and the notifications and stuff. But that, that was really fast, like, a, yeah, no problem over in Australian internet. Now, in my settings here, uh, I have a Timor option. <laughs> uh, Chrome, <laughs> Chrome offers you to, um, to like, customize your uh, network conditions. So, yeah, Timor is about two seconds latency, 30 kilobytes down, 30 kilobytes up. Uh, and that's, honestly, like, that's... That's good. Like in Timor, uh, in, Dili, you'll, in Dili, the capital, you'll get much better than that. Uh, but in what we call the districts, like outside of Dili, uh, those are like good conditions. If I, have, if I have this there, I'm pretty happy. Um, so I set Timor, and I reload my page. And that's going to load, but that's going to take a little while, right? Be even this initial request, there is latency there. Then there is some download time. All the cache sets are just cached. Um, and then my JSON down there is also taking a while. I think in general, um, we think a lot about, we'll think about a lot about uh, raw speed, but in Timor, a lot, a lot of the problem stems from latency, really. Uh, and here, if I take the offline box and I'm offline and I try to reload, of course, I get this annoying, there is no internet connection, you're offline kind of thing. Um, yeah, so that's without service workers, and that's like not an acceptable user experience for Liga Inan. All right, let's take a look at what happens when we do have uh, service workers enabled. So, Australian internet, um, oh, by the way, I'm going back, I'm going to this service worker developer tab here. So far, I was bypassing the service worker, like doing as if it wasn't existent uh, for development, so you can do that. Uh, but now I'm like actually letting the service worker handle my requests. And we load it over Australian internet, it's about the same speed, but um, we can see there is this from service worker column here. Um, and that tells you that the requests were actually handled not directly by the network, but by the service worker attached to this website. Okay, going back to the Timor preset, reloading the page, um, and that's going to be just as fast as my Australian internet. Everything is served from the service worker. And one interesting thing down there is all of these JSON requests, they've been made but they returned after our page was shown. So basically, all this data that you've seen at first, um, it wasn't coming from these JSON requests. 
and we'll, we'll see how to do this later. And then um, if I set the offline preset and I reload my application, it's just everything is loading. And my JSON requests at the bottom are failing, but my application is being shown. So basically, if, I, if you didn't have this Chrome tab open, you wouldn't be able to tell that you have a slow network or that you are offline. It, it all looks as if you had full network and everything has been cached before. Okay, so how, how did we do that, right? Um, let's take a step back and talk a little bit about what service workers are. Um, so they really run like a proxy ser per server. You really got to think about them like they're sitting between your application and the internet. Uh, and all of the requests that are being made by your application are going through this service worker. And it's up to the service worker to decide what you're going to do with this request. You can check the network, you can serve from cache, you can just go directly to the, to the, to the server. Uh, but yeah, everything is being handled by the service worker. Um, they do run in the background, as in you, can, you define a service worker attached to your application. Uh, and in certain specific cases, you could even have your service worker running when none of the tabs for your application is running. Um, and they're entirely written in JavaScript. Okay, so how do you create your service worker? So if you have your applications code here, um, you call this register method on the navigator.service worker. Uh, you pass it a string that is a path to the file that contains your service worker's code. Uh, so your server should be here, your server should be serving this sw.js file. Um, and then if this has been successful, as in like the file has been downloaded and the, the browser has registered the service worker, then you get a registration object. Um, in practice, you often see code that's like a little more complicated like this, where you're checking whether the service worker exists on the navigator. And for Edge users and Safari users, they won't get that, but that's fine. Like they'll just won't get like offline experience. Chrome and Firefox users can still get it. Um, and you can also pass a scope option to your register method. And what this does is it says, okay, this service worker only attach it to this subscope of my application. Only these pages are going to be using my service worker. Um, but in general, your scope cannot be any higher than the scope of your application. Um, okay, so let, let's take a look at what's within our sw.js, right? Uh, so this is really a proxy server written in JavaScript. You're listening to fetch events, uh, and you get events passed to your event listener, and then you can respond with something. Um, let's, we're going to start with uh, some, like, useless and simple examples, and then you can see like how you do something useful and complicated. Um, yeah, so like a useless service worker is just doing whatever not having a service worker would do, right? So you're just fetching that request. You're being passed the request, but you're always just forwarding to the network. And so uh, you're going to fail if the network fails. And that's not very interesting, but at least that's simple. Um, um, an annoying service worker is always responding with uh, like this pre-canned response that you're not even serving from cache, you're never reaching the network, you're just like always returning something that's predefined. Um, but let's think about use cases that would actually be useful or using our service workers. Um, maybe um, one service worker that would be useful in Australia would be you can assume the network is available, but if that network does fail, uh, you serve from the cache, right? Uh, and you, that's, that's pretty realistic, isn't it? Like It's like maybe people are commuting, then uh, their network will fail, um, but, you, but in general, the network, you can assume that it's available. Um, so here's how you'd go about it. You respond to the event with a network or, with a network or cache, um, and this function isn't part of the service worker API, so we are, we're going to have to define it. Um, but here's you would, how you would go about it. So we're using our fetch function. Uh, that, by the way, like this is a this is part of the fetch API. So this I I, I didn't write, um, and we're fetching from the request, and inside of the uh, we're catching any of the promises failure because fetch is returning a promise. Uh, we're catching any of the promises failure. And if this is failing, we're serving uh, from cache. So you'll need to have cached before um, any requests that have been made that were made to a similar URI. And we'll, we'll talk later about how you would go with the caching strategy. Um, but yeah, this would work. And 
the catch event handler um, will not be called if you are returning like a, a 400 or a 500 or something. It, it will be called if the network is failing. Uh, from cache, in the, the service worker, you get access to a, ca a global cache object. Uh, and that this is namespace. So here I'm accessing the, the, from the my cache cache. Um, and then you can match requests. So you can say any request, basically any cache entry that is matching this request, just open it and then return whatever is in, is in this cache entry. Um, as a, like, yeah, that's a couple lines of code there, but um, in general it's like pretty straightforward how to open, put in the cache, add to the cache, get from the cache, etc. cetera. Um, all right, let, let, uh, if we were in Timor, I wouldn't do this in Timor because sometimes the latency is like 10 seconds and I don't want my users to wait for like 10 seconds. So what we're doing in Liga Inan and the reason why you are seeing these JSON requests um, responding after the page is loaded is that I'm actually always serving from the cache, but whenever I'm serving from the cache, I'm also attempting to retrieve from the, from the network. So that's why the page is loading first. But at the same time, that's why um, the requests are being triggered because the service worker is like, oh, like we're accessing this cache. Now it's probably a good moment to try to update that cache. Um, yeah, and this is how you'd go about it. So you are definitely responding to this fetch event right away with the cache. And this is our, the same from cache function than the one we were using right before. Uh, but you, you, after this, uh, you're not returning right away. You're also adding uh, you're, you're calling this add to cache function, which is going to reach the network. Uh, so I'm giving you the code here for the add to cache function, but it's very similar than the one we we're having before, only it's actually calling the fetch function. So we're opening the cache, uh, calling fetch, and if this fetch is successful, we're just updating the cache entry for that request with an, our new response. And uh, what you can have is, in Ligainan, for example, let's say that the cache has 100 mothers, and uh, let's say that the, the network after the page is loaded is responding with 101 mothers. It's gonna be our application's uh, role to um, handle this, the fact that the, what has returned from the network is different than what has been loaded from the cache. So you can just say, oh, there's 101 mother, I'm just gonna inject that new mother inside of the view that we have here. And the user is just gonna see, oh, like there's a, mother, a new mother that pops up. And um, if, if we have the same number of mothers, um, what our application is doing is it's actually returning a 304, in which case the application is saying, oh, okay, it's a, this, this is returning a second time, but there's nothing new, so I'm not updating the view at all. Um, one thing you should be aware of also about service workers is their life cycle. Um, so because they run in the background, uh, you can't always assume that whatever file is at sw.js will be the one that uh, will be running as a service worker for your application. So coming back to our register function that we were calling before, if you're registering sw.js, uh, the browser is going to download that file, uh, and then it's going to install the service worker. And third, it's going to activate it. Uh, now, there is a difference between being installed and activated, because if you do have an old service worker that is already running for your application, the browser is actually going to wait until your tab is closed to activate the new one. So you have the old one, it's installed, activated. The new one is installed, not yet activated. And then once your tab is closed, the browser is like, oh, I won't need this old service worker anymore. I'm just unregistering it. And then the one, the new one that was already installed, I'm activating this one for my application. Um, another, um, another thing where this is, the install event is gonna be useful is for caching. You can say, oh, instead of ca attempting to cache when the requests are actually being made, I could just like cache everything I'm, I know I'm gonna need in the future during the service worker's installation. And we'll see this later. Um, a little word about debugging. You've seen this tab before during the video. Um, this is really useful in general. Um, for example, you can by bypass your service worker when you are just working on your application's code. Uh, you don't necessarily want your service worker to meddle your with your requests. So you have this little checkbox there, you're just bypassing it during development. Another interesting thing is like the update on reload uh, so that you don't have to actually like close the tab and reopen it to activate your new service worker. If you're like actively developing on this sw.js file, you'll want to always re like reactivate the newest one every time you reload the page. Um, 
Another thing, I want to draw your attention on this little sync button that's at the right. Um, and that's for background sync. That's um, maybe a more advanced feature of service workers. Uh, let's say that you have a, a chat app and the user attempts to, to send a chat message um, while offline, right? Um, in the service worker, you, you can enqueue a sync. Uh, and what this is going to do is this is going to wait for the network to come up to sync this message. But the interesting thing about it is that even if your user's tab is closed, um, this thing is going to be reattempted in the background until it actually clears. Uh, and then when your, work, when your user is coming back on their, on their tab, the message has been sent. And the user is like, oh, I, I left the tab, the message wasn't sent, and I'm coming back, and the message has been sent. Um, let's take a look at how we would integrate our service worker with Django and um, how we would pre-cache during installation. So what we have uh, for Liga A9 is we have this view um, that's the service worker view and that's just serving our JavaScript file. And the reason why this is uh, served as a, an actual view and not just like a static asset is because we, uh, we know in advance all the URLs that we want to have cached uh, and we're pre-caching. And so when you're installing your service worker, uh, for example, the mother's JSON, the notifications JSON, they're all being pre-cached. Uh, and this is being called during the installation. So we're adding an event hist listener, and during the service worker's installation, we're pre-caching all of this. And the good thing is, like, as soon as, um, as soon as the service worker is active, we know we have all of these cache entries that we can now rely on. Um, and I think that's, in general, like a reasonable strategy, because when you're downloading a service worker, well, you're downloading it, so you know the network is available then. Uh, so this is a good moment to start caching all of the things you think you, think you will need to cache. Um, if you're only caching after, uh, you're at risk of your user maybe like accessing, trying to access the network only an hour after, uh, in which case the, the, the network might not be available anymore. Couple caveats for service workers. Um, they're only available over HTTPS, which uh, I'm happy about. It gives like an incentive for HTTPS, but um, yeah, if you're not serving your website over HTTPS, that might be a problem. Uh, that's not true during development, so local host is usually excluded by the browsers so that you can develop your service worker. Uh, they don't have any access to the DOM, so what, in general, they're, they're really just function like a, a server, and then it's your application's job to update the DOM depending on what is being returned by the service worker. Also, another thing that we've seen a little bit is um, the, the scope of the service worker. So if, for example, your application is living at example.com slash app, um, your service worker will, the, the service worker that is registered by this application will not be able to handle anything above example.com slash app. Uh, you can define it such that the scope is lower than that, but not such that it's higher than that. And this is something you have to keep in mind, especially uh, for cross-origin. So as far as I know, there is no possibility to have cross-origin service workers. Um, and then one little thing that people uh, usually run into is that the fetch function that we use to access the network won't send your credentials by default. So if you're using cookie authentication, uh, those cookies won't be sent by default. You just have to pass this option that's credentials equals true, I think. Um, Okay, I, so that's a, there's a bunch of stuff you can do with service workers in general. It can get much more complicated than this, and I think you can really find a lot of examples uh, online that will suit your needs. But here's something you can do maybe today or soon uh, that won't take you long, and I, I think is like a significant improvement over a lot of websites that are out there, is just create an offline page. So instead of having your, web, your users seeing uh, they're like, there is no internet connection with this, this little dinosaur, which I don't like personally. Like, uh, you can just have like a branded website offline page that says, oh, it looks like you're offline, and it looks the same as your main page, and it, it doesn't have to show any kind of information. You're just showing you're offline. So you have an offline at HTML page, uh, and this you'll definitely have to pre-cache during the installation because it'll never be <laughs> accessible over the network. Um, but yeah, like. And, it, and it's as easy as this, really. You register a small service worker. Um, during the installation, you're pre-caching this, this page. And then whenever you have a fetch, you're attempting to fetch over the network. And that'll always succeed when the network is there. And if this fails, you're just serving back 
offline at HTML. All right, thank you very much. I hope you're convinced. <laughs> <laughs>